Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex and today we're going to talk about using Spring Boot together with Flyway. So Flyway is a tool that you can use to run migrations on your database. So that means you have a couple of SQL scripts that are versioned and that you can just run and apply in a controlled manner. And this is a little bit different to how we can use this with um, JPA and entities. So you can usually annotate your um, entities and then like let Hibernate take care of generating the database schema or changing it according to your needs. And this, this works nice most of the time, um, but it has a few drawbacks, especially if you want to evolve the tables or you want to make sure that you keep a record of what has changed and when and how. And this is where Flyway really shines. And I, I really prefer using Flyway in most of my projects these days. It's a little bit more effort on the SQL side because you have to write these, these SQL scripts manually but I feel that it gives me much more control and I can evolve the application in a, in a more predictable manner, so to say. So in this video, I'm gonna show you just a quick overview of how Flyway works, how you can integrate it, and why it might be a good fit for one of your projects. So with that said, let's code. So welcome to the IDE. Let's quickly take a look at the build file. Um, as usual, I'm using Spring Boot 272. And I'm bringing in the Spring Boot Starter JDBC because I want to really keep it low level here. And we need the Flyway dependency. These are the two most relevant ones. And I'm using the H2 database in this example as well. Um, let's quickly also take a look at um, the configuration for H2 because that's also relevant. If we take a look at the properties file, you can see I'm using H2 uh, with the persistent uh, file uh, and the reason is that we can inspect the database later on that just makes it a little bit easier because I can just let the application run and then afterwards inspect the database um, using the database explorer here in IntelliJ so other than that I'm providing the username the password and the driver class name that's really not much much else going on here so how does flyway actually work so when you have it on the class path there is a folder that you need to create, which is DB and then there's migration and it's under the resources um, directory. And you can see I already created two scripts here. And this is the pattern that you that you just have to comply with. So it starts with the V, um, then there's the version, then there are two underscores and then it's the name of the migration that you want to run. There are other conventions, for example, undoing scripts. I'm not talking about that here because that's not part of the Flyway community edition. Um, so let's quickly look into those. So. I came up with a very simple schema of uh, an application that might use Spring, Spring Security and have a user concept. So you can see I create a table, uh, users, um, pass in username, password and the usual properties that come with Spring Security. So it's unlocked, enable it and created add if you want to see when has the user been created. And we also have authorities linked to those users. And I'm also, I'm pretty much doing it all by hand in the script. I'm also taking care of creating a sequence for these two tables and creating a unique index on the username because I just uh, want to make sure that uh, the username is unique. So it's really just a straightforward SQL script that I've run here. So let's take a look at the second script, um, which is really just adding a user. So we can see um, I'm inserting some data into the users table. Um, that's the email, the encrypted password, the first name, the last name, the current timestamp, and the user is of course um, unlocked and enabled. And I'm also creating an authority here. Uh, and this authority is called admin and it's just attached to that user. So really nothing special in here. Um, but these version numbers as we have them here, 001 and 002 are what Flyway uses to figure out the sequence of scripts um, that, that should be applied. Because clearly I can only add the admins once I have the tables in place, right? So this is why this version number is larger than the one that we had here already. So let's actually run the application and see what's, what's happening. So if we go to the application and we run it, well, let's take a look at log files. So what we can see is a lot of stuff going on already. So we have the H2 database that's connected and it says successfully validated two migrations. Um, so that's the first one, um, version 001 and add tables. That's the one that uh, we had applied first. And then it says add admins, which is really just all there is to it. So let's open the database explorer in IntelliJ uh, and we can, can connect to the database in here. So let's do this because it's a file. I can still introspect it. Um, so there are a couple of tables. So let me just 
reduce that. So we have the table authorities that I had created myself and we have the table users that I had also created myself as part of these migrations. So first let's look into them. So we can see that there's one user that has been created as we would have expected. It's all in there. And we also have authorities and it's linked via the foreign key to the user. So that's all good. But we can also see that there is an additional table that we did not create manually and it's called flyway schema history. So we can peek into that and we can see that it has a couple of things that it's that it's done. So here are the actual migrations that we have created ourselves um, with the versions, with the description. So this is how, how Flyway splits it up. It has the version, which is um, the number initially. And then after the underscores, we can see that there's the description. And then we can also see the script name. Uh, we can see the user that has installed it, which is SA, which is the, the, the default user kind of for H2. We can see when it has been installed. Uh, and the execution time and whether it was a success or not. And using that table Flyway can figure out um, what version to apply. Because if, if we run an application in production and we now locally add a couple of new migration scripts, once we deploy, Flyway runs automatically in the setup and it has to figure out, okay, what is the next migration that I have to apply? Uh, or what are the next migrations that have to be applied? And it just applies them in sequence there. Um, and this is this is really the magic of it. And let's quickly take a look at the data, shall we? All right, so let's go back to the application. And we've seen the data here, so there's, there's nothing special going on, but just as a way of accessing it uh, from the application, let's create a quick sample. So we're using um, the logger here, get logger for spring flyaway application class so that we can actually lock something. And then you might have not seen that before, but there's a command line runner that we can use um, to just run some code initially. Um, so what I'm doing here is querying the database, just to make sure that it's all in there. Um, so I ask Spring to inject me the, JDC, the JDBC template. Um, and then uh, let's actually map the users. So data class, I'm not, I'm not mapping all of the properties. Let's just map the ID and the username that should, should be enough for now. Um, all right, got to import that one. And then we can just query all the users with JDBC query. Um, and then we use select asterisk from users. Now we have to map it so we can provide a row mapper. We're using the data class row mapper here. Um, and then just pass in the user type so it knows how to map it. And then we just print the users. That's really, oh no, we have the logger, so let's use the logger. Um, users to string. So let's run this. So this is really just to make sure that everything's in there. It works as expected. This is not what I wanted. Um, I wanted to run this, so let's quickly start the application and see what's going on. Yeah, so as we can see, um, I'm unable to open the, um, the the database connection right now because I have the file-based database, right? I have to just release the connection here. And let me also clean it up just to make sure that we don't run into any issues here. Um, that's why it's file-based. All right, and then let's quickly just try that again. So no more errors, that's good. And we can see um, the log is just logging the one user that is in the database. So this is all nice and well running these migrations, but you might be wondering what if things are getting a little bit more complex, right? Because with SQL scripts, there's only so much that you can do with them. So what if you need to compute some values that are added as part of a migration? And we can actually run a migration with code. So just for the fun of it, let's create a new table actually. So I'm just creating a new file and we can um, change that here. No, never mind. I, I don't do it. We can annotate it with a component. Let's see. So we have to follow the same pattern that, that we've seen in the migration files. So I'm using uh, version 003 and I call this at status table. Just adding a new table. We call it status table. It doesn't really do much. But what we can do there is can still declare this a spring component. So we can use pretty much all of the capabilities of Spring except for JDBC template injection because that would um, provide us with a circular reference. So we're not going to do that here. Um, but there's one class that we have to extend, which is base Java migration, which is coming from Flyway. So, and that requires us to implement one function, which is called migrate. So 
what can we do here? Um, I can use the context that's provided and then just use use the connection that's part of the context, prepare a statement. And let's, again, let's just create a simple table just for the fun of it. We call it status. It really doesn't do anything else and we can just execute. So this will now um, apply that migration and we run that statement. We have to be very careful that we don't um, close the connection in here or do anything uh, wild, uh, except for really just executing um, the, the scripts or the queries here. And you can use the, the base Java migration that we develop here to uh, come up with your own logic, prepare the data, um, do some calculations before it's actually being added. So uh, let's just quickly make sure that this is added to, um, to the database as well. So let me go back to the application and then quickly run that. And we should be able to see right now that the third migration is being picked up and executed. And we can see it here. So we have, because I didn't delete the database right now, it says current version of the schema is 002, which is fine because we applied the first two migrations before. And now I'm applying the third one that I just added in code, which is at status table. So that one has been applied successfully. And to wrap things up, let's quickly refresh this here and look at the database again. And we can see it has been applied because for one, there is a new status table, which really doesn't do anything. And if you go to the flyway schema history, we can see that it has applied at status uh, table. The script is really just a file then. Uh, we can see it's not been a SQL script, but it's JDBC that we've used there. Um, and we can see that it has been a success. So this is, this is really all there is to it. Again, if you're comfortable managing your database or evolving it, uh, writing scripts by hand, this is really great um, by also making sure um, that your version or keep a, keep a history of the changes for the database. So um, there's way more to fly with that we can dive into in an upcoming video. So far, thanks for watching this one. Consider subscribing and I'll see you on the next one.